The Shortcuts app has got to be the one app that most of us are afraid to use. And the crazy part is we know that this app is powerful and can completely change the way that we use our devices. But the question is, how do we take full advantage of it when it's so complicated to use? Well, that's all going to change now. We're going to talk about what shortcuts are, how they work, and a few ways that they can be used to increase your productivity. Let's get into it. Now, a shortcut is a set of instructions that create an action automatically. Think of it as a group of actions that your device can run automatically. For example, when you need directions getting home, you have to open maps, enter your address, or select home and start. Or if you want to send a text message, you have to go to the message app, find the person you want to message, and type the message and then send it. But with the shortcut, you can complete all of the steps with one touch. Now there are basically two ways to add shortcuts. You can use ready-made shortcuts. The shortcuts app has a gallery inside with some pre-made options. And you can also download shortcuts that other people have built and they share. Most of these can be used immediately or you might have to make a couple of small customizations to fit your needs. You can also build your own from scratch. Now this is the way that most of us shy away from because it's a little complicated, but trust me, once we get the basics down, it's pretty easy from there. We're gonna do some examples later on and we're gonna start Start simple and you can add more actions as you get comfortable. Now let's take a look inside the Shortcuts app. We've identified everything that makes up the Shortcuts app. Let's take a tour around the app itself. When you first open the app, you'll see tiles and each tile is a different shortcut. Some of these come preloaded from Apple and some from apps that you've installed like Amazon, Audible, or Google that can automatically add their own shortcuts into the app. If you tap on the tile, the shortcut runs immediately. But if you wanna see how it works, just tap the three dots at the top right corner of the tile and that's where you can see and edit the steps to it. For example, this shortcut that I've built for the planners I create to add in calendar invites or reminders. It has all these steps listed from top to bottom. Each one is an action, like add a new event or add a new reminder. And from here, each step can be customized. Now that we know what a shortcut is, let's talk about the different actions you can use in the Shortcuts app. The actions are grouped into two categories. First, you have your own device actions that are built into the iOS system. And your actions are just that. They're the steps that you want to take when you're completing your shortcuts. And you can find the list of actions under the search bar that says search actions. Now let's go over the actions. First, we have scripting, and this is the brain of your shortcuts. This is where your direct orders are listed. When you want the shortcut to show something, choose or list something, add text, basically telling the shortcut what you need. The controls are what you want the shortcut to do, like change the system settings, turn on a setting, or use a setting to take a picture or a video. Device is where you get the information you need about your device, like the battery percentage, the current orientation, or notifications. The location is just that. It's using the GPS to get directions like where you currently are or where you want to go. Now, media is where the actions that you want to take with your music, photos, podcasts, and so on are stored. Sharing is where you have the option to send files, messages, and even create QR codes. Next is documents, and here you can create and edit files, mark up PDFs, save your receipts, and organize your files or documents. And lastly, we have web, and this is where you take any actions involving the internet, like opening URLs, going to certain pages, filtering articles, or grabbing content. And beside each action in the list, there's a small eye icon, and this will tell you everything that the action does. Next group are app specific actions. These are shortcuts that are created by app developers for features that can be used in the shortcuts app, like your health app that can pull your health data, Uber or Uber Eats, where you can request a ride or duplicate a previous food order or Venmo that you can use to request payments. Now let's talk about the different ways that you can run a shortcut. You can always open the shortcuts app and tap the tile to run the app, but you don't have to come into the app every time you want to run a shortcut. You can also add shortcuts to your home screen by opening the shortcut with the three dots and then the drop down next to the name, select add to home screen. From here, you can select the color or a symbol that you want to use for your icon, or you can add an image that you have saved in your photo library. Once you've created your icon, you want to select add to add it to your home screen. Now your shortcut is like an app icon and you just tap it to run it. On the shortcuts home screen, you can also select the three dots on the towel and then share. And from here, you have the option to add it to your home screen too. 
can also use Siri to open shortcuts. Just select the three dots on the towel in the drop down next to the name, select rename and make sure you use a phrase that's easy to remember or something that you would say that's in your normal voice, like send my current location. Then you can just, I'm not gonna say her name again so I don't trigger your devices, but tell old girl, send my location and she'll automatically run the shortcut for you. Now, if your phone has an action button, you can also program it to a shortcut. Just go to settings, action button, swipe to shortcuts and then pick the shortcut that you want to use here. Once you have your shortcut set up, you can press and hold the action button and run it even from a locked phone. Now this is perfect if you want to set up a safety shortcut and I'll show you later how to set one up to send your location from here. Now it's time for us to build a few shortcuts and I promise that we'll start off simple. All right, let's start off with a shortcut that you can use to quickly FaceTime one of your favorites. Open the shortcuts app and tap the plus sign at the top right to create a new shortcut. Select a drop down next to new shortcut and then the rename option. We're gonna name this shortcut FaceTime and the person that you're calling. I'm gonna use my group chat with my sister cousins. And I'm using the group chat for this shortcut so I can show you how to add more than one contact if you want to. Once you have your shortcut named, I'm gonna scroll down on the action list and I'm gonna select the FaceTime app. From here, select FaceTime again to add it to your list of actions. Now you wanna select the blue text of contact and this is where you can add in the contacts you wanna call. You can use this plus sign at the end of the contact to add as many contacts as you want. So you can, if you have five people that you wanna call with this FaceTime call, you can set it up to call them. Once you have all your contacts added, select the check sign to move on to the next step. That's all the steps for this shortcut. Now let's add it to the home screen so you can access it with a tap. You can use the drop down next to the name and add it to home screen. And whenever you add a shortcut to your home screen, you have the option to customize the icon as it's gonna appear on your home screen. So for this one, I'm gonna use a picture of us for the group chat to add to my home screen as the icon. And now whenever I wanna start a FaceTime call with my group chat, all I have to do is tap this icon and it's calling them right now. You can also use the name of this shortcut with Siri to get her to call for you. I'm just gonna edit out the beginning of this prompt so I can show you how it works. FaceTime sister cousins. All right, now let's set up the send my current location, the safety one that I was telling you that you can set up with your action button. And if your phone doesn't have an action button, this will still work. So we're gonna open shortcuts and we're gonna use the plus sign to create a new shortcut. I'm going to use the search bar to search for a get current location. Once you see the prompt come up, you can select it from the list to add it to your list of actions. All right, now you wanna search send message. Tap on the blue recipients and this is where you can add the contact information in for the person that you wanna send your location to. You always have the option to add more than one person here. And I'm gonna use the blue drop down at the end to make sure show compose sheet is turned off because I don't wanna see the build of the message before it's sent. Now we're gonna name it send my current location. And you can always use the play button to test out your shortcut to make sure it's running like it's supposed to. So I hit the play button and it pops up and sends me, texts me my current address. So now if you have an action button, you can go into settings and action button and set this shortcut to your action button. And now when you double tap on the side, it'll automatically send your address. Now, if you don't have an action button on your phone, you can always tell Siri to send your current address. Now your automations are what makes your shortcuts run by themselves when prompted or something happens to trigger it. Let's set up a few so you can see how they work. All right, so first let's set up an automation to help you when your battery is running low. From the shortcuts home screen, you wanna select automation. Now on your iPad, it's gonna be to the list on the left. On your phone, it's gonna be at the bottom. If this is your first automation, you wanna select new automation. If you have automations already, you're gonna use the plus sign to add one. In this pop-up list, you can scroll down and select battery level. 
From here, we're gonna slide the bar under wind to 20%. So this changes the percentage on the rest of the directions down at the bottom. So we wanna slide it to 20 and then select falls below 20. And you wanna select run immediately. And this is a shortcut or an action that I wanna receive a notification for. So I'm gonna to toggle that on so we can let me know that the battery is below 20% and that this shortcut has been turned on. Now select next and this is where we're gonna set up the action. So when the battery falls below 20% in this list, you want to select set low power mode. So what we've set up, so what we've set up so far is when the battery percentage gets below 20%, it's automatically going to kick on your low power mode. And I'm going to press play so you can see that this actually occurs when you get below 20%, the little battery turns yellow so you know that you're in low power mode. So now that we have your device going into low power mode when it gets below 20%, I want to set up another automation that once we put it on the charger and it gets above 30%, then it comes out of low power mode and goes into regular battery. So we're going to select the plus sign to add to this automation in the pop-up you're going to select battery level we're going to move the bar down to 30 percent this time you want to select rises above 30 percent and at the bottom i'm going to select run immediately and i'm also turning the notification on for this one too select next and then set low battery mode again and from here you want to tap the on to turn it to off I'm gonna check this again with the play button and you'll notice that the battery goes from yellow back to black. So it's going back into the regular battery mode now. Let's set up another automation that will text you good morning and the weather where you currently are when you turn off your alarm. So we're gonna select automations at the bottom of the screen and then we're gonna use the plus sign at the top to add a new automation. Select alarm from the menu and then make sure is stopped is selected. Next, you wanna choose which alarm you want this attached to. You can choose any if you have one that's a wake up alarm or an existing alarm. And I'm gonna choose existing and then the one I have set for my work week. I'm also gonna select run immediately and I don't need a confirmation for this automation. From here, you wanna select next and then create new shortcut. I'm gonna use the search option to search for get current weather. We're gonna go back to the search option and search for text. Now this is where you're gonna type in whatever greeting that you want your text message to say. I'm gonna put in, good morning, Ashley, here's the current weather. Now you wanna tap select variable and then select weather conditions from in between these two boxes that we have in the shortcut list already. Now we're gonna search for send message For the recipient, you wanna add in your information so the text comes to you. And you can also send it to other people if you want to, like if you wanna add your children or your spouse in here to get the information, you can text them with this daily update too. Now I'm just gonna test out this automation with the play button and you'll see the message pop up at the top where it's giving me the current weather for where I am right now. All right, and this last automation is gonna be for my readers. You can automatically turn on and off the color filter option and make your iPad black and white while you're reading. Select automation from the list and we're gonna add a new automation. In this pop-up menu, you wanna select apps. And from here, you wanna choose the apps that you use for reading. I'm gonna add the book app and I'm gonna add Kindle. At the bottom, choose run immediately and then select next. Now you wanna add a new shortcut. In the search actions, type in color. Your action should read turn color filter on and select done. Now we're going to turn on another automation that will turn off the color filter when you come out of the reading app. Select the plus sign again and from the pop-up menu you're going to choose app. Select your reading apps from the list and then done. Select run immediately at the bottom and in the box you want to check is closed instead of is opened. Now select done. We're going to select the new shortcut option and from here you want to search color. And now you wanna tap on on to turn it to off, then select done. Now, whenever you enter your reading apps, it'll automatically remove the color from your screen and turn it black and white. And when you leave the reading app, the color will come back.
Lastly, let's go over a few tips you need to remember when creating your shortcuts. Now your order matters. Make sure your actions run from the top to the bottom. Any blue text is customizable. Just tap it and you can change it. While you're building your shortcut, you can always use the play button to test out your steps to make sure everything is working. And lastly, keep your shortcut name simple and easy to say so old girl can help you out when you need her. That's it for today. I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any additional tips or if you would like to take a deeper dive into the the shortcuts app and we can work on some more content all right y'all till next time